Welcome to my Stirling engine. <coughs> Die, Meccano Stirling engine. But well, that's a picture of it. The real engine is here. Let me put the engine. There is the heat source for the engine. The heat source is a tea light candle. I can drop bits of fuel down the chimney into the tea light candle to make it burn. Now I don't use a small tea light candle, a small tin. I use the bigger tin to dissipate the heat to stop it boiling. If the engine picks up speed, that clutch slowly engages the drive so the ferris wheel starts to turn. The mechanism in the middle there has a, a link on a piston rod which rocks a brass wheel backwards and forwards that moves the displacer up and down. The displacer moves air between the hot place and the cold place causing it to expand and to expand and contract. That particular displacer is made of fiberglass so the air can pass through it improving efficiency. The cold that, that black thing there is a piston, it's a graphite piston in a glass cylinder. Glass cylinder. The bent crank is a displacer drive that moves a thin rod up and down through a seal made of bathroom sealant to the airtight displacer chamber. The uh, flywheel spins three times faster than the crank as it is geared up through one of the two sets of gears. The one of the only one of those two sets of gears is engagement. Another set of gears, again only one actual set is in engagement, connects the drive to a chain at the back, turns the ferris wheel. It's actually quite efficient for a tiny little candle to move all of that. Most Sterling engines, even the good ones, you see the really precision made ones at the model engineering exhibi exhibitions, hardly ever actually see them driving anything. Here's a relatively simple one made of Meccano, but it is actually quite well designed. And as it warms through, everything warms through, it's surprising how fast it's going. That's quite a heavy ferris wheel. The displacer moves up and down the side of that chamber, moving air between a hot end and a cold end, causing expanding contract. The bent lever is a displacer driver, the straight one is driven by a piston which is pulled and pushed by the air, expanding and contracting. That, that piston is a glass in a glass cylinder wrapped in plastic, drives that crank, it drives the whole mechanism that makes the engine run. 3 to 1 gear spin the flywheel 3 times as fast as the engine, which for a centrifugal clutch and another set of gears drives a ferris wheel, which as you see is going quite quickly. I can drop bits of fuel down the chimney, and that feeds a chute that feeds the fuel into the fire, which is a tea light candle burning in a bath of wax, which is uh, in a sardine tin. The place is made of fiberglass so that the air can flow through it, improving efficiency. The longest this engine has run for has been about 8 hours because it can just keep feeding little bits of wax into it. So you just take little bits of wax and drop them down the chimney. Now, and that controls the level of the wax in the bath and therefore how strong the flame burns. Smoke alarm is for safety just in case it catches fire. This is my favourite shot of it. A rod connected to the pis piston sideways from the main piston rod rocks a little brass wheel 90 degrees out of phase with the uh, 
main piston motion and that our 90 degrees alpha phase motion moves with the spacer up and down. The knocking sound you hear is that the spacer banging the bottom end of the cylinder. If it worked for that knocking, remember it's only Meccano, the engine would run absolutely silently. There is no need for a Stirling engine to make any noise at all. That knocking noise, as I said, is a mechanical noise. It's not a function of the engine. It's simply a function of my rather crude engineering. wheel in rock and backwards and forwards by the mechanism. Let's stop that clock. Welcome to my Sterling engine. This is an image of it running on video. The engine is actually over here. Sterling engine has a displacer inside. This one's a regenerating display, so the technically inclined will know what that is. It means it recovers heat. Um, the displacer moves up and down between the hot end of a chamber and the cold end. A trapped volume of air gets displaced by the displacer, and as it gets moved from the cold end to the hot end, it expands and contracts. As it does so, it drives a piston. The straight arm has been driven by the piston, which is a little black cylinder. The bent arm is moving the displacer rod up and down, which is a thin rod passing through a bearing made out of bathroom sealant as a seal. The cold end is basically a bucket full of water. You can just see the water, but that water is actually at room temperature. That drives a crank connection assembly there. Let's see if I can get the camera in. I can't really see. That crank is geared by one of those gears to the flywheel, three to one, flywheel go three times as fast as the crank. That drives a universal joint to drive a set of gears for that ferris wheel. As you can see by the speed of the ferris wheel, the engine is actually quite powerful. That thing you hear clattering away is a centrifugal clutch which engages as the engine picks up speed to transfer the power to the wheel. The heat source is a little tea-like candle in the base. Just over the spanner there's a tea-like candle in the base. There's an underside shot of the drive mechanism, the back of the flywheel. There's, there's a close-in shot of the uh, mechanism from the back. The engine from above. Let's see if I can get another shot of the crank mechanism. The piston rod has a uh, has a, a, an extra connection on it, which rocks that little brass wheel that holds in it, which moves that arm up and down the bent arm that works the displacer. From the power source, I lift the engine up. Lift the engine up. The power source. Lift it all up. And the power source is just that little candle. Welcome to my Meccano Sterling engine. This is a video image of the engine playing on the computer. Let's go over to the actual engine. The one on the computer is running off load, which is why it's going fast. This is the engine driving a Ferris wheel. Let me put the torch on so we can see it better. Light up the torch. There. Let's put a torch on it so it shows up better wheel. If I get out the light, I feel better. A sterling engine.
the Stirling engine is an engine that uses hot air or gas instead of steam. In that little window you can see going up and down is the displacer, a wadge of fiberglass trapped between two wooden discs. The displacer heats a trapped volume of air in what is actually the bottom of a tin, heated up by a little tea light candle flame in that window. As the displacer moves up and down, this one's a regenerating displacer, as it moves up and down the uh, air passes through it and it is displaced from the hot end of the chamber where the candle is to the cold end where the, there's a, which is at room temperature. That causes the temperature of the air to run and rise up and down and as it does so it expands and contracts, pushing and pulling on the piston. The bent crank is the displacer driving a thin rod, <coughs> moving the displacer up and down. The straight crank is the piston which is driving the engine. This particular engine has a displacer where the air actually passes backwards and forwards through the displacer to aid heat recovery and that improves efficiency. The crankshaft is geared 3 to 1, there's two sets of gears, there are only ones engaged. Three, the crankshaft, the flywheel is geared to run three times as fast as the crankshaft. That drives a central fugal clutch. Engine speeds up, clutch engages, and drives the gears. Sets the ferris wheel in motion. Smoke alarms for safety reasons because there's a fire in it. The fire to make the engine go is through visible through that little window. And that thing you can see moving up and down is a displacer. That moves the air in the sealed chamber in which it sits in up and down between the hot end which is the bottom and the cold end which is the top. That makes it expand and contract and drive the piston up and down. The bent arm is the displacer drive, the straight arm is the piston pushing and pulling. That drives through a 90 degree crank mechanism. And back here. Single crank driving both displacer and the piston. Crankshaft is geared, flywheel is geared to spin three times as fast as the crank for smoother running. Whole lot's powered by a tea light candle. And there's a little chute arranged so that if I drop little bits of wax down the chimney, a guide guides the little bits of wax onto the fire. Make a bit of wax and drop it down the chimney. Whoops, gone. That drops it onto the fire that keeps it fed. It runs for hours like that. The engine the central fugal clutch is transmitting power to the Ferris wheel. When the Ferris wheel gets up speed, the whole thing will get up speed. And there's the Sterling engine there from the back. Flywheel spins three times as fast as the crank as the uh, crankshaft is operated from a piston right at the back. A, a rod 90 degrees to the piston rod locks a little brass wheel back and forward to drive the displacer. The displacer, seen moving up and down in the little window, moves there between the hot end and the cold end. That causes it to expand and contract, and that expansion and contraction drives the piston. The straight rod is the straight the carnet strip is the piston drive. The bent strip is the displacer drive, which is a thin steel rod passing through a bearing made of a bathroom sealant to keep it airtight. That little light is a tea light candle that drives the whole thing. Um, that sits in a bath of candle wax. And to top the engine up with fuel, 
I can drop little bits of fuel down the chimney. That's a smoke alarm for safety. As you can see, for a tea light candle, it's surprisingly efficient. Even the good engines you see at any model engineering shows are really nicely made sterling engines. are going up and down. It moves the air from the hot end to the cold end, expands and contracts. That drives the piston which is there inside that black cylinder. That pushes the uh, crank both directions. That drives the displacer a 90 degree motion. Via a geared crank shaft which is there, so the flywheel goes three times as fast as the engine. Reducing gears are there to reduce the speed to drive the load which we'll run later.